Hello everyone, welcome to Resilience Unraveled. This podcast is the result of my fascination with subjects like resilience, accountability, burnout, life fulfilment and other life and work based performance issues, as well as many of the other obsessions I bump into in my life. I spend my time working with highly successful teams, people and organisations and this podcast introduces their remarkable stories and expertise as well as my own synthesis of the key issues, strategies, tips, tools and resources to thrive in life. If you find this podcast useful, why not go over to our site qedod.com. Stay tuned to the end to find out details of how to order a free ebook. Enjoy the podcast. So uh, hi, everybody. Um, Welcome to our podcast, which is also um, supported by Slides on YouTube this week. And um, we're operating this video and podcast in association with our good friends and colleagues at the Port Silent Wellness and Therapy Centre, a place where you can actually acquire some of the um, techniques, online resources and um, physical products that we're going to be talking about today. And I wanted in these difficult times to be able to talk about something we can all do whether we're anxious and worried about the future or whether we're um, um, quite relaxed and chilled out, um, we need to think about boosting our immunity. The best way to be able to look after our own mental and physical well-being is to build our own physical immunity. And that's what today's um, podcast and broad, broadcast is all about. And some details in terms of content for you, if you want to get hold of our friends at Port Solent Wellness and Therapy Centre, it's Facebook Port Solent WTC or Port Solent WTC.com. And of course, ourselves, as usual at qedod.com and uh, on LinkedIn at qed. And so without further ado, let's think about immunity. And um, immunity for me is um, represented by four main areas, food, lifestyle, movement or exercise, and sort of relevant therapies. And over the next two series today and another um, broadcast next week, we'll be talking about each of those. But today we're going to be focused on foods because, of course, that's such a huge sort of area. And um, it's important to understand that um, immunity system is a massively complex thing. We can summarise it as being um, sort of um, an innate or acquired response. The innate uh, is um, inherited and judges an external friend from foe. It flushes or burns out invaders, and this can obviously make us feel sort of feverish or snotty, but generally underwhelmed uh, under the weather. Um, you know, if you have a, um, an acquired response, this is more like the body SWAT team where when when invaders have been specifically recognized or recognized again and then that part of the immune system identifies the cells that can uh, kill him, kill that kill the threat and send them into battle so there's sort of a known and unknown threat response and and depending on where the threat comes from depends on the uh, response of the immune system so if it's a, a threat that affects your lungs you get respiratory um, um, responses and if it's something that you swallow goes at your stomach that's where you get diarrhea that's and and snot and such like is about you know defending the nasal passages so whilst we we like to think that oh we're suffering actually this is a sign that our immune system's working and part of our immune system of course is a big part is the lymphatic system it's a sort of network of um, nodes and vessels tubes filled with a uh, clear fluid called lymph which continues continues contains uh, tissue fluid, waste products, and immune system cells. Um, And this whole system is the um, um, system that is strengthened by um, um, immunity drugs that allow your immunity system to kick into gear and to fight diseases for things like cancer and such like. Um, And they basically depend on things like white blood cells, which are made in lymph organs, uh, like the spleen or thymus, and then the bone marrow. And we also have general antibodies, which are part of the system, and T cells, which are sort of the foot soldiers that come marching out to protect us. And um, whilst we have to recognise that part of what the immune system does is to to create inflammation in the the system that makes us... um, that makes the things work and one of the things that people talk about is that let's make our immune system as productive as possible but so for some people they have overactive symptoms so for example if you have an allergen all that is is that your immune system is either over triggered or over recognizing threats which create a response so some people who have asthma eczema hay fever for example a lot of us have that or even food allergies have that have that situation and um 
And what you're always trying to do is to look after yourself and recognize that your immune system has to work on a regular basis. In fact, some people used to swear by this idea that we used to have two colds a year to test the immune system, those T4 cells coming out and actually, you know, working. And no surprise to see that the usual uh, enemies of immunity are smoking, excessive drinking of alcohol in particular, poor sleep, um, too much stress, obviously um, exposure to too many infections, but also uh, poor gut health and diet. And um, it's the sort of the microbiome we have in our system is really important to protect us from um, um, decreases in our immunity. So it's important that we focus on some of those things. And so you can, as you can imagine, building balance, diet, exercise, stress management, lifestyle management, and actually, as I say, building gut health and creating a complexity of diet to help you. Um, if you think about it, your um, if if your if a pathogen breaches your defences, you know what you have is all these um, things, all these germs, all these bacteria springing to your defence. White blood cells, gut flora working, you know, and to and to and to recognise that your gut flora, your biome, the microbes, the bacteria in your body need to be looked after. They need to be stimulated, um, and making sure that you have the most um, conducive um, immunity systems going. So sometimes people take extra vitamins. This can be useful. Um, supplements and minerals can be useful. Some, of course, um, basically once you reach your daily intake, just um, are you know ejected from your system through your normal extraction processes, like on the toilet and such like. So you just have to recognise that you don't have to overdo the vitamins, particularly vitamin C, because once it you know you can't metabolise and hang on to it. So basically, it just gets flushed out. So watch where you're not over over. Um, Overegging the vitamins. Um, fermentation of food foods are really important. Kefir yogurt, pickles, sauerkraut, kimchi. Um, those sorts of um, delicacies are now really fashionable because of our increasing knowledge of the microbiome, making sure it's very rich, very um, able to deal with the things which are thrown at it. Uh, and um, basically, it's, it's about making sure that things that can get into your microbiome can be fi fixed because it has the variety to do something with it. Probiotics are all fashionable, and we have to watch that actually we're looking and dealing with live bacteria rather than just some of these fashionable sugar drinks that call themselves being probiotics. One of the things that we um, will talk about later is our daily uplifter, which is full of real probiotics. But let's start at the easy bit, and let's start thinking about the rainbow of food. And key to all of us, and I think none of us will be surprised, is the arrival of fruits on the scene, things to have. Citrus foods are really great because they have tons of... Um, vitamin C in them, but also other vitamins as well. And whilst you can have supplements, there is nothing better than a love of food and a curiosity about food and a desire to actually create variety. Creating this rainbow on your plate is really, really important. And um, basically making sure that all these have um, um, vitamin C in them. You can cook them, you can have them raw. Raw is usually best with skins on where appropriate. Don't eat banana skins, obviously. Um, but making sure that you can do those sorts of things. Um, blueberries have particularly antioxidant properties and um, and can link directly to the immune system. And they have um, anthocyanin, which is an antioxidant, which um, actually does link um uh, their flavonoids to part of the respiratory tract's immune defense system. So that might be interesting. Um, so basically, uh, researchers found that people who ate foods rich in flavonoids were less likely to get an upper respiratory tract infection, or common cold that those that did not. And that might be useful at the moment. Papaya is a, another fruit loaded with vitamin C. Tricky to find, more sugary than some, but it also has a digestive enzyme in it called papain that has anti-inflammatory effects. And decent amounts of potassium, B vitamins and folate, all of which are good for you. Papaya, great. And kiwi, great. Tons of essential nutrients, including that folate, potassium, vitamin K, again, and vitamin C. And... Um, for some people, they swear by elderberries. And it's a shrub that's been used medicinally for ages. Um, 
Extracts of elderberry often use um, with antiviral, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory drugs and um, have um, reported properties from extracts um, and also high in flavonoids because it reduces swelling in the mucous membranes. You have to be careful with elderberries that actually it, it can react negatively with certain um, prescribed medicines. So check your dot, doctor before going too wild. But obviously um, making sure that anything sensibly taken should be okay. You know, don't go chugging loads and loads and loads of elderberries every day. Acaia, a side berry, is black purple fruit from the uh, from the palm tree in Brazil. And uh, very high in anthocyanins, which are um, flavonoid molecules, which have very potent accident, uh, antioxidants again. And these um, also combat oxidative stress in the body by mocking, mopping up three radicals. And we want to sort of contain free radicals so that they do cellular damage. And so basically, um, lots and lots of good information, uh, lots and lots of good evidence of the um, acai berry being good for you. So any sort of supplement where it has acai in it would be good. And sorry if you could say acai or acai, it depends on where you come from, uh, whichever you fancy. Watermelons, I was surprised to find, is um, a useful thing. Um, one um, serving of watermelons, 270 um, uh, mg of potassium and 30% of your daily value of vitamin A. And um, it is, it's sort of lower in calories, particularly watermelon. Um, it gets some B6 and other, some other useful bits and pieces. So why not do something with watermelon? And actually, um, I mean, watermelon slices are, you know, commonplace, but you can shove it on flu fruit, um, sort of on um, a fruit salad, have a tall glass of um, watermelon lemonade, homemade, no sugar, um, add cheese to it. Um, or freeze it and have it as a sorbet and um, add it with ginger as well as very, very nice. Some people swear by um, pomegranate as well. And there's a load of interesting things around um, pomegranates inhibiting the growth of harmful types of bacteria, including E. coli, Salmonella, Yersinia, Listeria, Clostridium, and blah, 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 blah. Tons of stuff. Um, does have antiviral properties against the flu, herpes and other viruses. Um, but it also um, has been proven to extract ec the um, sorry uh, pomegranate extracts um, create the growth of beneficial gut flora uh, that protects the immune system as well. And um, there's a Latin or a couple of Latin names which might uh, fox the most um, erudite amongst us, and I'm certainly not that. But a really great thing to look at if for vitamin C is to look at red peppers. Red bell peppers in particular, pound, oh, ounce for ounce, pound for pound, red peppers contain twice as much vitamin C as citrus and also a source of beta carotene, which boosts the Im immune system. But the thing about it is that because the red peppers are low in sugar or fructose, um, they're a good source of vitamin C for people who have challenges um, than um So, for example, diabetics and fit people who are avoiding too much of that. Um why not stir fry them, roast them, steal them, steam and boiling? But um, raw is good as well. Now, of course, veggies we've known for years. There's something really peculiar, isn't it? That something that the something the better there is for your taste, the worse it is. And broccoli is supercharged with vitamins and minerals, A, C, and E vitamins, antioxidants, fibre. One of the best things you can put on the table, and one of the dullest as well, in my view. But it's really good for you. Um, one cup of broccoli provides as much vitamin C as an orange, but without the sugars. High in beta carotene, potassium, magnesium, zinc and iron. Zinc's really important, and we'll talk about later. And supplies an array of bit B vitamins, one, two, three, and six. Oh my goodness. Why is it so good for you? Because it contains choline, which is good for, good for the gut. And it's sort of the same family as sort of sprouts and kale. Um, you can do groovy things with broccoli. You can put it in soup. You can casserole it. You can put it in a salad. You can sl slather it in lemon. You can roast it. You can do all sorts of things with it. You know, broccoli is broccoli, I'm afraid. Put it on your plate. Eat it. And just imagine your halo shining is my advice. Yes, potatoes, pota sweet potatoes, however, are a different thing. Tons of vitamin A. Low calories. Cholesterol-free. Fat-free all the grooviness that you can possibly have and rich in fiber too and rich in beta carotene as well which um it's the thing that actually gives the sweet potatoes the um, orange color and a source of vitamin a
which give you some protection against skin damage. And um, feel free. I mean, interesting thing about sweet potatoes roasted are actually actually pretty lovely. And if you have a, a real potato lover in your family and a sweet potato lover, you can roast them side by side. I was really surprised about the um, the mania around mushrooms. I didn't realise that button mushrooms were so high in selenium and B vitamins like riboflavin and niacin, which are really, really good for you. And um, apparently um, mushrooms synthesise vitamin D when they're exposed to ultraviolet light. In fact, they may be the only plant source of vitamin D, which is, uh, there's a big story about vitamin D affecting the immune system positively. So I'll think about that. Sauté grilling, always groovy, shove them in um, salads, put them in lasagna, portobello mushroom tops and veggie burgers. I, I've seen um, veggie, veggie burgers, veggie steaks, which are really just mushrooms. Mushrooms are good. And why not with some broccoli and sweet potatoes alongside? Oh, my goodness. Okay, I can almost smell the oven firing up spinach is great um not that horrible gooey spinach has been roasted for six hours and it turns all slimy have it raw if you possibly can or really just cook for a few seconds so it just begins to break down um, nutrients in spinach boost immune function provide the body with necessary nutrients for cell division and dna repair sounds good gotta be worth doing it and those lovely flavonized carotenoids vitamin c and a part of the billing we all know spinach is good for us so think of innovative ways of doing something with this we also know garlic's good for us it's really brilliant uh, you know add garlic to everything basically and if you're all eating garlic it doesn't matter that you all um smell a bit garlicky hey why not uh, it has antibacterial antiviral antifungal properties uh bulbs according to research are rich in antioxidants that quench free radicals again that play a role in alzheimer's disease heart disease cancers and other conditions your diet can really help you with certain big um diseases in the world so hey why 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 not why not do something with it? And, you know, why not incorporate ginger onto your diet as well? Again, ginger is really great for you. Um, again, quenching free radicals, helping God against arthritis, cancer, neurodegenerative disorders, and, and many other conditions. Um, grate it, steep it in hot water to make ginger tea. Yum! I do like ginger myself, actually. I have it with a smoothie in the morning. And um, it really helps with the decreasing of inflammation, which is great for sore throats, could be useful, and other inflammatory illnesses also decreases nausea you can have a sweet version if you want in puddings but um, um basically people that have a lot of ginger apparently have increases the number of t-cells your army cells that attack naughtiness now people that had ginger to hot chocolate oh yeah imagine that ginger muffins oh hot ginger chicken wings why not so let's get on to the other category now. People swear by yogurt and kefir. Kefir is uh, fermented yogurt in a way. But uh, low-fat yogurt can be really good for you. Um, it's got all the protein in, of course. Um, it has um, often supplemented with vitamin B12, vitamin B2, which is riboflavin. It's often rich in probiotics if it's got a live culture, like a Greek yogurt or something along those lines. It helps with... Um, Good flora, which um, particularly those dealing with the digestion, detoxification, immune function, and probiotics and yogurts can help with reducing uh, eczema and such like. Again, look for the live and, live and active cultures and uh, get plain yogurts rather than pre-flavoured or any with sugar in. You can sweeten uh, yogurt yourself with healthy fruits. Why not pop some uh, ginger or blueberries in? Yum! Or even a bit of cucumber salad with them. Use it instead of uh, butter in some places or instead of cream. Almonds and seeds are great for you. Um, it's a fat, they have a fat soluble vitamin in it called vitamin E, which um, are really, really good for you. Careful though, because um, they have fiber and manganese in it, but they can be quite uh, fattening. So you just have to watch that. But almonds are really good for you, as are sunflower seeds. Uh, again, more vitamin E, um, phosphorus, magnesium, B6, and such like, and really great. And also other foods with high vitamin E include avocados, dark leafy greens. So you can actually um, toast almonds and seeds and put them on other foods. I'm a great fan of green tea. And um, 
green tea does have caffeine in it, but it also has polyphenols and flavonoids. So again, it's sort of a, a superfood green tea. Um, it favorably affects blood lipids, increasing good HDL cholesterol and decreasing LDL bad cholesterol. And so, you know, that's a really good good piece of news for you because um, it, it can actually directly enhance immune function. And because you're removing milk from your diet, you're reducing sort of negative dairy and sort of the sugars from milk as well. Um, it's uh, a good source of the amino acid L-theanine, which a, may aid, aid in the production of germ-finding camp compounds in your T-cells. Again, feeding that army of yours up. Um, and whilst it does have caffeine, it doesn't have it as much as others, other drinks. Um, you might want to get real green tea rather than just the stuff in the supermarket with um, um, flavours in. But, um, you know, you know, that doesn't harm either. Poultry, lots of groovy stuff. Um, we also used to say poultry in particular, um, turkey has lots of serotonin in it. Uh, vitamin B6 is really great for you. Low fat, obviously. Excellent news. Um, behind vitamin B6, I think, is said. And um, it's, um, you know, has all sorts of really lovely stuff. It, it, boil it. Boil the stock and broth. Make soup out of it. Really groovy. And shellfish is really good. Obviously, oily fish and oysters are good for you. Um, and the reason for the shellfish, poultry, oily fish and oysters um, is that it has lots of zinc in it. And zinc's really great because that having more zinc allows you to actually ingest more iron. So that in, in helps your overall well-being and such like. Um, not too much, though. You only need 11 milligrams of um, zinc a day and for, and for women, 8 milligrams. But actually, it's, it's pretty hard to get up there. And of course, all these things have omega-3 in it, which is really great in terms of bone and arthritis and such like. And of course, it's reducing the amount of omega-9s, omega which are come from more vegetable type of things. And oysters, not that I like them, but they're really great for selenium, iron, vitamin C and such like. I'd rather get some of those things personally from um, Brazil nuts, but, you know, there you go. Some people like an oyster. If you're feeling that you need a night in and you're going to do something really groovy, no, it knocks up oysters together. Why not? What about oysters Rockefeller, oyster stew, scallops or grilled oysters? Blah. There you go. And um, going back to our um, fermented foods, we've talked a little bit about kefir, but it's just a fermented drink. That it's like a yogurt again, so you get the benefits of yogurt, yogurt and such like. And um, we um, there is in, there's evidence in animals that um, kefir is really positive for fighting and in, reducing inflammation, increasing antioxidant activity, and fighting bacteria. But um, hey, why not? We're animals, aren't we? Why not go for it? Same with miso soup. Um, salty paste made from fermented soybeans is rich in probiotics, uh, boosts the immune, immune system, beneficial for the gastrointestinal health, and um, a lack of beneficial bacteria and imbalance of bacteria in the GI tract is associated with a variety of medical conditions, including IBS, food allergies, gastroenteritis, inflammatory bowel disease. And so Amizo soup seems a really simple way to actually start to really, really, really get the beneficial microorganizations, uh, microorganisms in these soups and kaffirs and other fermented foods to get them into your uh, GI tract, get them into your microbiome, start building those other things. Supplements. Turmeric's great. It's in the curries. It's bright yellow. That bitter taste it has is the key that makes things, make it make it great. It's the same thing that you have in almonds. Sorry, not almonds. Uh, what are they called? Walnuts. Uh, the bitterness in food is really great. Um, it's in tons of different um, cooking things. Curcumin, which it has, is an antioxidant and has um, been linked with anti-inflammatory effects. And um, turmeric and cinnamon um, both help symptoms of cold. I mix it with raw honey. And um, you're going to get a groovy drink there. Some people swear by wheat germ, um, the innermost part of a wheat kernel, tons of it, B vitamins, zinc and vitamin E. Sprinkle it on top of that lovely yogurt. Make it a shake. Add your blueberries. You can think creatively about these sorts of things, all normal sorts of bits and pieces to do. Uh, one of the products that we sell is something called the Daily Uplifter. Um, it's something we've trialed from the States. It's a really brilliant package of foods. Um, you, you basically one packet, 
um, gives you 14 servings. So two packets that last you a month. You add it to your breakfast cereals, and it really gives you everything you need to actually sustain gut health. Now, acai berries and such like are all in it. Really well recommended. Ours are our super greens, which are, again, another sprinkle that you can put on food. So if you're not getting enough of those green vegetables, or maybe you don't like the taste, and maybe you're just not interested in the cooking side, you can have um, a yogurt and such like and mix things together or put it in your porridge in the morning however however else you might want to do and the good news for some people dark chocolate hooray it has an antioxidant in it called theobromine which let's listen to this may help to boost the immune system by protecting the body's cells from free radicals this doesn't mean you should be eating two million tons of dark chocolate um, but it means that dark chocolate could be on the menu not the nasty sort of low-grade um cabris buttons and such like but proper high cocoa dark chocolate so you know you know food can be fun how can we help we can produce the daily uplifter which is great the super greens the great health food supplements we've got all sorts of other supplements like turmeric we have many other different pieces that our colleagues at the port Solon and wellness center can sort out for you go to port and wtc.com have a look at what the health have. They also have CBD, which is a cannabinoid oil, which allows you to maybe control some of the stress effects in your lives. Why not? Why not have a try at that? Why not get yourself a better night's sleep? If you're sleeping better, then you know that helps your immune system. Hypnotherapy can affect positively the effects of anxiety and stress that again is helping your immune system and coaching something that we do here a lot in qed is all about this idea of getting a sense of purpose getting back a sense of control in your life really having thinking strategies to allow you to make a difference in your life so here we're ready to help you and then our next episode is all the non-food related things we can help we'll be talking about anxiety and stress and all those things we just chatted about now as sort of a quick guide and some unusual things maybe a bit alternative but there you go again you can get hold of us at qedod.com and there'll be a special um, nutrition and immunity download offer you can have at qedod.com forward slash immunity where you can get access to an ebook and all sorts of bits and pieces and you can go to portsellandwtc.com for materials and more information so until next week until i get the chance to talk to you again it's been a joy to talk a joy to hopefully add some value and if you have any more questions you can contact me at qedod.com forward slash contact until the next time take care thanks for listening today you can go to our site qedod.com forward slash podcasts and subscribe to hear other titles in our series. Or you can contact us at info at qedod.com to hear and find out more about tough love, leadership, accountability, resilience and burnout. You can go to our site qedod.com forward slash burnout 2019 to hear and get access to a load of resources to help you manage and fight burnout. And you can go to qedod.com forward slash free ebook to hear more about the fundamentals of resilience. Until the next episode, keep on thriving!